welcome to another episode of the Pre-Praise Report here on CCU Live. Thank you for joining us today. I am your host, Bree Hargosita. On today's episode, we sit down with Reverend Tantanet Poole and discuss the very important issues of mental health, especially the stigma surrounding mental health in the African American community. Reverend Poole will discuss will give us some insight on coping mechanisms and resources to help those going through a mental health emergency. But first, let's see what's going on at your church. Don't miss weekly Wednesday Bible study with Bishop Hargrove at 7 p.m. Bishop is teaching on the signs of the times. We encourage you to tune into Facebook and YouTube, but you can also attend in person here in the sanctuary. But social distancing and masks are required. Giving your tithes and offering has never been easier. There are a number of ways you can give your tithes, even right now. One way is going to our website, ChristCareUnitNBC.org. Click on the yellow donate button, enter your info, and, and you're done. You can also give your tithes via Cash App, search the tag, give CCU, enter the amount, and it's that easy. If you attend church in person on Sunday, giving your tithes via credit or debit card is still an option. CCU can't run on a daily basis without the generous donations from all of you. All of our bills get paid and maintenance upkeep for this beautiful house of worship only is possible when the members of CCU give their tithes. Bishop Harbo thanks you all so much for your generosity and giving to CCU, even in these tough times, so thank you. The new senior housing is still accepting applications. If you are ready for your new home sweet home, contact the number or email at the bottom of the screen. CCU has also been very busy with building our all new phase of our development project. In addition to the current homes and senior housing, CCU is now adding yet another section of brand new affordable housing. Let's take a look at our new senior housing and brand new housing phase. The CCU senior housing offers brand new luxury resort living featuring a beautiful entranceway with a water feature, large common area, kitchen, gym, and game room. If you think the CCU Senior Housing is for you, contact the leasing office today. CCU is also currently building its third phase of residential living, with 60 more units being added onto our current 90-unit section of housing. The new phase is set to be completed as early as mid-2021. Keep an eye out for more information on leasing. Okay, CCU, please welcome at this time from Holistic Counseling Services. She is also known as my mom or the mom of the community, Reverend Tanjanette Poole. We are just so happy to have you here with us today. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. Of course. Can you tell our viewers um, what is your role here at CCU? I am the youth pastor of our great youth our Bible study. Been working with the ministry for the last 16 years and in the role of youth pastor for the last four years. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what your profession is? Oh, sure. Great. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I've been working in the field for 20 years okay. um, in my own private practice, which is Holistic Counseling Services. Okay. And what is a licensed practical social worker? So it's the same as any other, as a therapist, so as um, a psychologist, uh, a, a licensed professional counselor. We all provide the same services. Okay. We just have different titles. Okay. And what do they, what do they deal with? So... Um, the, the field of mental health, what we deal with is what, how people are coping with emotions, um, whether that be mental health um, in the sense of uh, fear-based issues or if that's kind of like how they process with their environments that, that they're in. So okay. how we react in our environment, how we feel within our environment, and how we think in our environment. So can you tell our viewers a little bit more what is about mental health? What is yes. it? Yes. So mental health is really pretty much an easy way to see it is how we think, feel, or act. Okay. In the field of mental health, we what we want to do is make sure that you're operating at what we call, consider to be an optimum level. Okay. Where you feel overall well and good as opposed to feeling overwhelmed or suicidal. Okay. okay. So are there any different types of mental health issues? What are the different 
types of it? So a common mental health type is most people hear about anxiety and depression. Okay. Anxiety can start as very small as you're just stressed out and worrying about how you're feeling with everyday life. Okay. Normal anxiety is preparing for a test or getting ready to interview with a job. But generalized anxiety is a little bit more. It's when you're not even under a stress situation, but you're feeling, your body feels all of the emotions as if you're in a heightened state. Okay. And you stay there all the time. Okay. And what are some things that prevent people who have these stressors or depression or anxiety? What are those some of the things that prevent them from getting the help that they need? So there is a stigma within the African-American community. And it's what it has done is robbed us from the ability to get the help that we need. Um, unfortunately, many people believe in the African-American community that if you reach out for help or if you say that I, need, I, need, I wanna go to counseling, mm -hmm. the first belief is that you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not true. Right. The issue with mental health and anxiety is when it's go it goes on for a very long time and it's not actually treated. Then it becomes where you have what we call a psychotic break, right. which means that's a loss of all defenses and the inability to cope at all. So it, to reach out for help is a strength, but the community feels judged. People feel judged by it or they might feel that they um, African-American men feel that they cannot show emotions or be weak. It's looked at negatively. So that impairs our community in itself from being willing to even seek help out. Right. And that's what we need to approach and say, no, it is actually strong right. that if you need help, that you seek the help you need. Mm -hmm. Because if a little bitty kid start worrying when they're one or two about picking their nails and that is never addressed, that's early signs of anxiety. If you ignore that, by the time they get older and they're a teenager, they're picking the skin off their nails. They're picking the skin off their um, body. And that issue could have been easily dealt with when they were two and three. But now we have full-blown uh, what we consider to be OCD or panic uh, attacks where it started off small and it continues it to grow addressed. because it was not addressed. Okay. Yes. Right. So I know that, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas are coming up. What are um, some of the signs that you see, you know, the mental health problems that you see around these holidays? So COVID-19 mimics just like the holiday season. There is something we call seasonal depression. It starts right after the summertime where we used to be outside in the sun and we're around people in different communities. So those of us within the community that are a little bit more isolated and might be, live by themselves and have very little contact or for those who have experienced things like a, the loss of a loved one during a holiday season, when you start getting into the winter months, there's a lot of less vitamin D and exposure to sun, a lot of less exposure to family and friends. And so that's kind of like pre precursors is what we consider that to be, okay. where you're automatically setting up to kind of be by yourself and being isolated. Okay. Um, God did not treat us, uh, uh, create us to be independent. He created us to be interdependent, where we depend and connect with each other, and we are a, co a collective body of people working and living out your lives. So um, sometimes when people isolate and they're by themselves and they're dealing with things, they don't have the supports they need. And so seasonal depression kind of heightens and their mental health over time kind of get to a heightened state, and they end up being in what we consider to be a crisis state, unfortunately. Wow, okay. So I know you mentioned um, that the holidays are kind of mimicking what's going on now with COVID. Since March, some people have been home, yes. stuck in the house and aren't able to work. They've been home stuck with kids and things like oh, that. That's a lot. What are some of the coping strategies that they can use dealing with being home with their kids and doing the online schooling and being and having to work from home at the same time? What are some coping mechanisms that they can use um, to not stay stress-free, but reduce distress and anxiety from all that is going on right it now. It is a lot going on. It's a lot going on for everyone. It's a lot going on for people who are trying to work from home. It's a lot going on for those people who have lost their jobs. It's a lot going on from the seniors who are in the house and who are afraid to leave the house. So everyone in different areas are stressed out. The most, the one thing I can tell um, parents who are trying to raise kids and work from home and navigate all of that at the same time, scheduling is the best thing and working together if you know someone else who has been isolated in a bubble you can you know you can watch their kids while they work a little bit and just kind of work together right. another thing is exercise is really important to stay together 
and to kind of go out and try, try to just kind of create a routine for yourself, mm -hmm. that's important. Mm -hmm. Eating healthy is ever important right now. And for seniors, kind of reach out to the local churches, kind of talk to people about, that can, maybe can go do your grocery shopping for you. The key is that you don't stay home and suffer. Right. When, it, when the mental, um, when COVID-19 um, first happened, the first people that we saw that reacted to it um, and started to call for assistance in the mental health field was young children. Little kids all started kind of um, showing early signs of what we consider to be panic attacks, which is very rare that you see children who are afraid if their dads and moms will leave home, they would wow. go into full blown panic attacks. About a month later, regrettably, then we saw parents kind of like freaking out and like, how am I supposed to be able to keep a kid in school and keep a job and make sure that everything is going on and the fear of going out. And so everybody has kind of created systems. Okay, how do we make sure we're safe? How do we, you know, do we order our food in or do we go pick it up early in the morning when people are not? Just try to plan, talk to your um, friends and family, talk to someone, and they can always reach out to us at Holistic Counseling Services. We're always there to give support and lend guidance on best practices and how okay. to overcome barriers. I know that um, dealing with mental health is considered to be taking care of yourself and having self-love. Why is self-love and so care, um, self-care so important? It's, it's, so it's the benchmarks for you. As much as it, we talk about, oftentimes we talk about um, physical health, exercising daily. We talk about spiritual health. We, as you know, as the body of Christ, we often talk about prayer and 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 fasting and spend reading our Bibles and spending time with God. It is equally important that we do not allow fear, worry, anxiety, and stresses of life to kind of um, um, bring us down and don't cope with those things and don't learn how to address them. Because, like I said before, the CDC. Um, published a report that says mental health is the number one precursor to high blood pressure, to COPD, wow. to um, heart disease, and to depression, and even cutting your lifespan uh, almost by a third as a result of mental health. So it is more important that you make sure that your mental health is, what, uh, is taken care of as you do your physical health wow. and your spiritual health. Okay, so um, I know you had mentioned your business holistic counseling. We'll give you guys more information on where you can find that yes. at. But what are some other um, community support groups that people can go to if they're struggling with anxiety, depression, um, um, who need marriage counseling, who need family and marriage counseling? What are some other support groups that they can go to yeah. to get help So with that? the stressor of finances, the stressors of how we're gonna pay our bills, it always um, come down to the family unit. And the marriages within the community suffers more than anything else. So it is important that they reach out to family members, that, that they call and get help and come the counseling. Okay. Um, many things come out when you're locked in the house with people for 24 hours and you really don't for learn and you, don't, and you don't know how to communicate with them. That is like a, 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 a boiling pot for a lot of unhealthy um, environments. So, and that's a lot of people are in that where they're in hostile living environments where people are speaking to them disrespectful. It is important that, you know, we have in the community help and support for those who are dealing with abuse, um, you know, and you have to reach out and call and you need a collective body of people that's going to help you. So they can call us, they can go online if they need to join a group to kind of figure out, okay, how do I learn how to get out of my house and start to build supports? Because okay. oftentimes a part of domestic violence is, is that spouses, they um, isolate those um, couples and they don't allow them to be able to have friends and family. And right. so they don't feel like they have a way out. So right. they have to reach out and not so be stuck. Can you stuck. give our viewers an exact, like a website that they can go to yes. or um, a, a link or a number that they can call or a hotline they can call? So 211 uh, is a number that they can reach out for all of the supports that we're kind of talking about. Okay. If you need to kind of, if you need help with social security um, because you are having to retire because you're afraid now to go to work. If you need help with food stamps, um, the Family Resource Center um, Support Center is um, here in Sickleville will help you. Right. Um, if, but if they hit 211 and they call it or go online and um, to 211, all of the resources are kind of broken down. Housing, food, um, mental health, um, drug and alcohol. There's many different things that people are doing to cope that's not in their best interest. Okay, so can you um, give our viewers uh, more information about your business. Yes, of course. We're here. Um, you, anyone can reach us at aholisticlife.org. That's www.aholisticlife.org. Our phone number is 856-318-1581. 
and they can always call us. And if you go to our website, we have an information um, area there and they can shoot any questions to us and we will be more than happy to help them, link of them course. to the appropriate sources. Well, thank you, Reverend Fools. Well, cool. so that's my mom. We, um, we're so happy that we yes. were able to have you here yes. and to get some more information and importance of dealing with mental health. Yes. We hope that we can have you back here with us. Um, so thank you again for being here with us. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. The most important thing, the only thing I want to say is that there is a crisis hotline and th that line will, um, information will be provided um, in the link okay. where they can reach out if they get to that point where they feel like there is no hope. Um, I just want to encourage them that there is always hope support. that Jesus Christ yes. is alive and living and that there is always supports out here that they just don't suffer in silence. Of course. Up next is Praise and Worship live from the CCU Sanctuary. Catch us next week for an all-new episode of the Pre-Praise Report at 8.45 a.m. Bye, y'all!